What's up, Bulldog Nation? Welcome back to another video, man. As you guys can see by the title, today we're going to be watching some KKK members reacting to their life sentences. You know what I'm saying? The video is by Courtroom Consequences. Don't forget to shoot them a subscribe, drop a comment, like one of the videos, maybe. Show them some support, you feel me? Because today, that's what we're going to be watching. So, guys, as always, don't forget, spark your blunts. So we know the vibes. Let's get straight into the video. <laughs> Travis McMichael, Gregory McMichael, and William Bryan. On February 23rd, 2020, Ahmad Arbery, a young black man, went for a jog in Satilla Shores, Georgia. Little did he know that his life would be cut short in a racially motivated hate crime. Three white males took him for a burglar and pursued Ahmad in their trucks, blocking his route as he sought to flee. Wow, what happens next so is shocking scary, and disgusting. Man. In one vehicle, Travis McMichael and his father, Gregory McMichael, were armed, while their neighbor, William Roddy Bryan, was in another vehicle. Travis McMichael exited his truck after overtaking Ahmad and assaulted him with a shotgun. Yeah, Travis McMichael so fatally shot Ahmad as he sought to defend himself. Brian's cell phone captured the altercation and Ahmad's murder. It only gets more frustrating from here. Despite the Glen County killer. Police Department's yeah. prompt arrival, no arrests were made for more than two months. That's right. 60 days these men lived freely. The GCPD received directives from the Waycross District Attorney George Barnhill and the Brunswick District Attorney's Office on two occasions not to make any arrests. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation did not make any arrests until the video of Ahmad's murder went viral on social media. Wow. Local authorities' treatment of the case aroused global indignation and sparked questions about racial profiling in the United States. The act was criticized by several religious leaders, politicians, athletes, and other celebrities. Ahmad would have just turned 26. He could have been my son. He could have been my brother. He could have been me. Could Former been Brunswick brother. District been Attorney me. Jackie Johnson was indicted for hindering law enforcement and displaying partiality to her former deputy. Georgia Attorney General Christopher M. Carr publicly requested the Federal Bureau of Investigation's assistance in the investigation. After all that, let's see if justice was served. The three men were tried in November 2021 and found guilty of felony murder, aggravated assault, false imprisonment, and criminal attempt to conduct false imprisonment. They were sentenced to life in prison without the chance of parole, plus life 20 prison, years. O'Brien was sentenced to life in jail, with the possibility of parole after 30 years. Do you think these men showed remorse for their actions in court? No. no. The men showed no remorse or reaction as their sentence was read. Following the murder of Ahmad, Georgia enacted hate crime laws and repealed and replaced its citizens' arrest law. These heinous acts aren't only limited to Georgia. Wait till you see what happened when Oregon witnessed a racially motivated crime. This Whoa. time, by Russell Courtier. This is Russell Courtier. In August 2016, Russell Courtier, a white supremacist prison gang member, ran over Larnell Bruce Jr., a black adolescent, with his Jeep, killing him. The incident occurred outside a 7-Eleven in Gresham, Oregon, just outside Portland. During a violent altercation with Bruce, Courtier got into his girlfriend's Jeep and drove towards him, striking him and causing serious injuries that resulted in Bruce's death at a nearby hospital. During the trial for this yeah. case, things got interesting. Up, During his trial, prosecutors pointed out that Courtier had a racist desire to be part of a brotherhood, which led him to join the European Kindred Gang. Oh, Prosecutor man. David Hannon stated that the life sentence was warranted, since the jury determined Courtier was, quote, motivated by his opinion of Mr. Bruce's skin color or race. To make matters worse, Russell was found to have a European kindred tattoo on his leg. The European kindred is the largest racist prison gang in Oregon, and Russell Courtier was proud enough to tattoo the gang's shield on his leg. Wow. When the tattoo was brought up in court, Courtier's lawyer had this to say. So, given that it's about almost 20 years old, uh, and given that it's the largest organization, has the symbol of EK or European Kindred Shield, has that found its way seeping into kind of 
Oregon community as a whole where people might recognize that shield if it was worn outside? Bruce's family was present at the sentencing. Bruce's birth mother, Christina Miles, addressed Courtier saying, You let the devil lead you astray and take the life of such a lovely young soul. Why? Could you explain why? Despite all of the evidence presented about how racist Russell Courtier was, his mother still had this to say in defense of her son. There was not mention of it. Rusty Clay didn't even think about that the whole time. He's never been racist. We have, like I said, I have a friend that I've known for like 35 years. Her family is black and white mix, and uh, they call her Aunt Betty. She's black. Courtier's girlfriend, Colleen Hunt, admitted allowing Courtier to use her cheek to track down Bruce. She pled guilty to manslaughter and was sentenced to 10 years in prison for her role in the crime. Wow. Courtier was found guilty on three counts of murder, failure to execute driver responsibilities, and violating Oregon's hate crime law. He was condemned to life in jail after a lengthy legal battle, with a minimum of 28 years before he is eligible for release. While nothing can bring Bruce back or erase the agony of his loved ones, this punishment should serve as a reminder that hate crimes have no place in our society especially for people like Jeremy Christian. Uh, this is Jeremy Christian, a self-proclaimed white supremacist. In May 2017, hundreds of people boarded a full Green Line Max train headed east into Clackamas Town Center on a bright spring day. What was supposed to be a typical drive quickly turned into a nightmare. A drunk Jeremy Christian began hurling hate speech and biased language at two black teenage girls, one of whom was Muslim and wearing a hijab. Witnesses reported that Christian continued to yell about decapitating heads, and the train operator even threatened to call the cops if he didn't stop. Passengers on the train, including Micah okay. Fletcher and Talisan Mirdin Namkai Mecha, implored Christian to stop yelling at the girls, but the situation swiftly deteriorated. And Christian stabbed Fletcher, Namkai Mecha, and a third passenger, Ricky Best, within 11 seconds. Best and Namkai Mecha died under horrible circumstances, while Fletcher was hospitalized with a big gash across his throat. Damn. Christian attempted to flee the train with the knife, but was apprehended and admitted to the stabbing. The tragedy stunned the entire Portland community, leaving many wondering how something like this could have happened. One of the casualties, Ricky That's Best, was an army veteran and an employee of the city of Portland's Bureau of Development Services. I can't stand by and do nothing, his son said, quoting his father. Micah Fletcher, another victim, was a Portland State University student at the time of the incident and spoke about how Portland is supposed to be a community where people can be protected. I want to apologize to my family for it, because I don't feel like I've been able to be there. I am so busy trying to heal myself, I have not been able to basically go home for three years. He stated that he still has nightmares from the day of the attack. During the trial, Kristen started cursing and threatening to kill a relative of the deceased who gave a victim impact statement. <laughs> His outburst led to his being removed from the court. He was sentenced to two uh, consecutive life terms without parole and an additional 25 years for other crimes after being found guilty of 12 counts, including first-degree murder, assault, and hate crimes. Christian showed no remorse for his crimes and even tried to justify them. But that wasn't the case for Kayla Norton and Jose Joe Torres. This is Kayla Norton and Jose Joe Torres. Kayla Norton and Jose Torres, both members of the white supremacist group Respect the Flag, were sentenced for a racist attack on an eight-year-old black child's birthday party in Georgia. The assault featured racial obscenities, firearms threats, and the flying of Confederate battle flags. Norton, Torres, and other Respect the Flag members went on an alcohol-fueled racist binge in Douglas and Paulding counties, west of Atlanta, in July 2015 a month after a racist shooter massacred nine worshipers at a historically black church in Charleston, South Carolina. And it didn't stop there. The group threatened black motorists before arriving at the outdoor birthday party. Phone footage of the attack shows cops attempting to form a barrier in front of the families as the trucks sped away. Following the attack, a Douglas County grand jury indicted the Respect the Flag organization as a street gang. Norton sobbed in the courtroom during the trial and apologized to the victim's families. 
She told the court that she accepted responsibility for her acts and apologized to the families who had attended the birthday party in the courtroom. I will never walk up to you and say those words to you. I'm so sorry. I have to do you. Superior Court Judge William Bo McClain is to Torres to 13 years in prison and seven years on probation, and Norton to six years in prison and nine years on probation. Both are also barred from entering Douglas County. This is Edgar Ray Killen. Edgar Ray Killen was an American Ku Klux Klan organizer who planned and executed the 1964 assassinations of three civil rights activists, Michael Schwerner, Andrew Goodman, and James Cheney. Killen and a number of armed men, including the deputy sheriff of Neshoba County, plotted to assassinate the three civil rights activists and murdered them. The state of Mississippi made very little effort to prosecute the perpetrators then. Still, Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy and the FBI launched a thorough investigation. An all-white jury heard a case in the Meridian Federal Courthouse in 1966, convicting seven conspirators and freeing eight others, including Killen. Over two decades later, an investigative reporter named Jerry Mitchell spent six years writing extensively on the case and aided in the convictions of other high-profile civil rights-era murder cases. Mitchell gathered additional evidence and found new witnesses in the murders of the three civil rights activists, eventually compelling the state to act. Mitchell found new prospective witnesses, developed the website, lobbied the United States Congress, and focused national media attention on reviving the case with the support of high school teacher Barry Bradford and three Illinois students. The students even got Killen to give his only taped interview concerning the murders. He was seen to be knowledgeable, aware, and sticking to his segregationist convictions. Killen was eventually convicted of three counts of manslaughter in state court and sentenced to 60 years in prison, which he began serving in June 2005. But it didn't end there, and wait until you hear this. Killen filed an appeal, alleging he couldn't use his right hand and was chronically bound to his wheelchair. He was bailed on a $600,000 appeal wow. bond. Still, a deputy sheriff later observed him wandering around freely and Killen was returned to prison. Uh -huh. The Mississippi Supreme Court upheld Killen's conviction in August 2007. Killen died in the Mississippi State Prison in 2018. One of these convicts has enough evil in them for a nation. If you thought these people were evil, watch how child predators show no remorse when receiving life sentences. That's crazy, man. These motherfucking murderers, man. People out here killing people without no remorse. No care in the world, man. No thoughts, no fucking, no conscience, man. These motherfuckers tripping. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy the compilation of these crazy ass motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? Stay tuned for the next video, man. The upload should be coming shortly, you feel me? So, drop a like if you fucked with it. Drop a comment, your opinions, your thoughts, and uh, subscribe to the channel, man. I'll see you in the next one. We out.